Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the resolution to consider a guarantee of $20 million from the National Insurance Corporation on behalf of the St. Lucia Development Bank as presented by the Minister for Finance. Mr. Speaker, if I should go back down memory lane, 2021 July, the St. Lucia Labour Party campaigned on a theme of putting people first. The Patriot campaigned on a theme for people and country. Certainly, Mr. Speaker, there seem to have been some commonality in the two campaigns, hence the reason I am here. And to date, I have not regretted the combination and the collaboration which eventually emerged in that to date, what history is showing is that the two initiatives, the two principles upon which we campaigned are being fulfilled. Working for the people and meeting the needs of the people. And if you were to count the number of initiatives on the part of this government, which impacts positively on the people. It is reflected and radiates in health, in education, in sports, in community development, in housing. One of the first initiatives, Mr. Speaker, which was articulated and implemented is the Housing Assistance Program to which the rep from Choiseul indicated. An initiative intended to assist persons who do not have the necessary financial or economic capacity to maintain their homes. And in all of our constituencies, Mr. Speaker, be it Choiseul, Wapatat in Castries North and Central Castries, Morgouge, Olion, Daniel Rivière, La Pointe, Amonier, La Bonne, Fort Saint Jacques, Saint Marie. You just keep naming it, Mr. Speaker. In each of those constituencies, Mr. Speaker, there are pockets of poverty, there are pockets of inability to maintain housing. And so it's because of the consciousness of this government, Mr. Speaker. It is because of the realization that this government has undertaken in a number of ways to step forward and to assist the people of this country one way or the other in education, in health, in housing, etc. And while we all may not be satisfied that some of the programs are not reaching all and sundry, the fact is those who need it most are indeed very satisfied that the government has seen the need and has come forward to assist them. And so I want to break a little moment and say thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for your consciousness, for your love, for your understanding, and your ability to come forward and to respond to the needs of our people. Mr. Speaker, the fact that two national institutions the National Insurance Corporation and the St. Lucia Development Bank can join with the philosophy, the vision, and the thinking of the Prime Minister to say, we can work together. I've got the resources. I can unlend to the Development Bank at an interest rate that is affordable to provide opportunity in housing to the people of St. Lucia is indeed commendable. It is indeed commendable. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, what are we seeing? A government who has a conscience saying that we will make, we will provide the guarantee.
in this collaboration, in this effort, to guarantee $20 million to allow public officers, be it policemen, teachers, nurses, porters at the hospital, all public officers, including self-employed persons, an opportunity to be able to qualify for a loan from the St. Lucia Development Bank at an interest rate that is affordable and not to abuse the abilities, the financial ability and capacity of those public officers. More so, Mr. Speaker, is a further extension, the further extension of ensuring that once the loan or the mortgage for which you will be applying for falls below $400,000, you will get some benefits. You will get the waiver of stamp duty on that mortgage. Okay? You will also be able, Mr. Speaker, to benefit from the other avenues which the Prime Minister speak of, which is quite encouraging to our people here in this country. <coughs> And therefore, Mr. Speaker, while those opportunities are exceptional and demonstrates the government commitment to uplifting the people and servicing the people, I look forward, Mr. Speaker, to the day when we will have an answer to social housing in this country, where we can assist the dispossessed not merely by giving them what we're already doing now in, in housing assistance, but providing an opportunity to provide shelter to our people. You know, Mr. Speaker, I often say that there are um, four elements that mankind depends on. Good health, they need food, they need clothing, and they need shelter. Shelter, Mr. Speaker, which is probably as critical as health, can be the most difficult element for them to achieve. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would hope, and I know the Minister for Housing has been speaking about it, to look in the direction of social housing to assist those who are not low-employed but they are no employed. What we say, no, no income, but they are, they are not low income, but they are low, no income. So we need to go even lower. So for those no income persons, those persons who don't have a steady job, those persons who are casual workers, those persons who cannot approach any bank, any institution whatsoever, Mr. Speaker, to say, here's my pay slip, I earn X amount every month. Those persons, Mr. Speaker, we need to start looking at them and see how we can help them out. In many instances, Mr. Speaker, those are the ones who squat on lands, government lands and private lands. And once they're able to put up a structure over a weekend, in five years' time, you'd be surprised. They've built a mansion only as a consequence of casual employment one way or the other. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I believe we need to find a way to deal with such situations. Government has to find a way to allocate lands in every part of this country that we can provide and offer to those persons lands on a lease to purchase arrangement, and a lease arrangement ranging from 75 years to 99 years with the option of being able to purchase, once their financial and economic ability improves, to be able to purchase. Because one of the problems we have, Mr. Speaker, in this country is that the most expensive part of housing is land. You heard $14, $14 an acre. Someone mentioned $14 an acre. Per square foot, sorry. $14 per square foot. Their land's going at $21 a square foot, at $50 a square foot. So if you get land and you're going to buy it at $20 a square foot, and you, meet, you need minimum 3,000 square feet of land, 
you're talking about $60,000 to put up front. Imagine someone who just doesn't have the income to find $60,000 to invest in land alone and you haven't built the house. A basic two-bedroom house, Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding the initiatives of the government to reduce on the price of building material, is anywhere in the region of sixty to $75,000. And I'm sure the Minister for Housing can confirm that. So my thing, Mr. Speaker, is to begin to think of innovative ways of providing social housing that would engage the people themselves who need those houses. One, to provide the land on a lease purchase arrangement, 75 years, etc., etc. If you build on that land and the bank takes it over, then it's transferable, the lease is transferable. And I'm sure the legal luminary here will confirm that with me. But it also means that you can start bringing people together in community and getting them engaged in building homes for themselves on a Kudme basis so you wipe out the need for labor costs. So the land, you get it on a lease arrangement, and the labor, you get it through the Kudme program, bringing in to our communities, bringing back into our culture that philosophy of helping one another, that culture of building community through participation. So Mr. Speaker, if we are able to do this, we would be doing a number of things, providing the opportunity for housing, giving an easier way to access land, giving a further opportunity for future acquisition or purchase of that land, giving an opportunity for the offsprings, the siblings, to be able, once they are able, to purchase the land, but also to take care of those who do not have a foot to stand on to go, whether it's a credit union, bank, or loan shack, to get a loan to build a house. And so, Mr. Speaker, I think we are on the right path. We're on the right path. This government is on the right path. But the problem I often have, Mr. Speaker, there's some people who make a lot of noises in this country. They criticize everything. They kick the bucket down the street until their toes get blistered. They will never one day stand up and support a good initiative of this government whenever it makes that um, initiative. So today, this piece of, this resolution intended for the poor people of this country, the working class of this country, the people who need housing, it is not important to some of them to sit there or to find themselves there to debate it. It is not important. So rather come and defend the cause for providing shelter to the people of this country, the poor people of this country, they run away. But they can't find time to go to find a lunatic to give them evidence with their ears and their eyes. Well, you go a long way. They can find that time, Mr. Speaker, to go to the United States and to say the individual better not waste their time, his time, to go up to the United States, Mr. Speaker, and speaks of bombshell but they cannot speak of shelter. <laughs> they cannot speak of shelter for the people of this country. And so the seat is empty because a loan for the people of this country is not important to the people of this country, to them in fact. Mr. Speaker, when we come here, when we offer ourselves to serve the people, we must offer ourselves. It is not a show. It is not a show. It is not a movie. It is a matter of commitment to the cause of the people. And hence, Mr. Speaker, why I'm proud of being part of this administration. 
an administration that has demonstrated full commitment to its promise. An administration who has shown total commitment to the cause of the people. And it's an administration that continues to remain focused to ensure, notwithstanding all the noises that are around, notwithstanding all of the attack, not out, not, notwithstanding all the attempts to derail this government, we are remaining focused and steadfast to doing the work of the people and to deliver to them once and for all. And so, Mr. Speaker, as we move forward with this resolution, I believe it is a good time and I believe it is one where we can demonstrate what we have done over the years. The minister who spoke earlier on, the Minister for Housing, spoke of the performance of the economy, spoke of the reducing unemployment rate, spoke how well the governor of the central bank has lifted and commended this government on the management of the economy. Do you think they'll see anything? Do you think they'll comment on it? Even though when the facts are presented to them, do you think they care? As a matter of fact, they may have, they may have, I'm sure, they may have postponed the meeting with the governor of the central bank. <laughs> Knowing their behavior, because if they're not here today, I can't imagine they were there yesterday. And it shows, Mr. Speaker, it shows, Mr. Speaker, what is important to those on the opposite side. But I must commend my friend Bradley. He's a poor fellow. He comes, member, sorry, Mr. Speaker. Please um, refer to the, the member, member for Shuzel, as a member for Shuzel, 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 Mr. Speaker, since I say my friend, I mentioned his name. But you know, Mr. Speaker, we people must stop doing this sort of thing. You sit away from Parliament six months in the beginning. Then you show up, you know, representation online. That's how you call it, online. So Mr. Speaker, I stand in full support of this resolution. I stand in support of this resolution because I believe it gives public officers, policemen, teachers, nurses, and other workers of government yet another opportunity to be able to access funding to provide shelter to themselves and their family. But more so, Mr. Speaker, it presents yet another opportunity and a demonstration of full commitment to the people of St. Lucia that this government is serious about serving them and will never give up on that mission to serve the people as they ought to be served. I thank you.